Um, guys, I'm really sorry. Uh, there was some uh, technical problem again uh, with the live stream. But I want to explain uh, further about the Canada immigration. <clears throat> and if you if you were cut off from the first live stream, I have started it again. Uh, so basically, any kind of parallel carrying la, I am doing some Malayalam te parangya ramen dudeshi kine. Apan naamal Canada le ki ramen te agri kine na gile. Naamal apurum federal ano, alagil visiting visa ano, alagil spousal visa ano. Like student visa, you know, eight visa, you know, Ningle, uh, Ningle Agri, in the Nola Gaiatil, Ningle and the Adimanuru, uh, mindset on Dakam. Adin Shasham, uh, Namala, uh, CIC.GC.CA in the Canadian website delivery. That's the uh, official website for, uh, um, uh, Canada immigration, um, refugees and everything. So that's the official Canada, uh, website. For all the immigration problems, uh, if you have any uh, any um, doubts, that's where you have to go and find that information, guys. Um, information. Number of the information gather here. Other session number, uh, number either the route to Variana number, uh, immigration. Um, okay, guys, I got it again. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna share this link with my friends and family first. Then we will go in and talk further about all these possibilities for you guys to come to Canada if you are eligible. Okay. So uh, guys, please join me. I'm so sorry that uh, we have some technical problem uh, here and there again. But uh, next time we will fix that and go from there. Um, okay, guys. Hey, hey, done. Not in life. How are you, man? Um, I just started the live stream at uh, 8.15 and uh, we had two technical problems already. Uh, one with my computer and one with my um, uh, my phone. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have come back again. And today we are discussing about uh, immigration. So basically, it's not uh, much about uh, fishing related or hunting related. So. I don't know to what extent you will understand this information and you will uh, it will be useful for you okay so um, uh, so I'm gonna talk some uh, information about immigration in my own language uh, my other language so that people will understand much better I hope so CIC.GC.CA um, Administration uh, my account create here. Uh, administration number, number, uh, uh, email and password to be or you, um, or account to create here. Administration number, uh, come to Canada tool, uh, very item number, number, uh, or checklist to the air aqua. Uh, I saw you. How are you, man? <laughs> Thank you for coming, uh, to my live stream. Uh, Darren, we are all doing good, man. So, we have a tool on the session. We have the information on the session. We have a answer on the session. We have a answer on the session. We have a question on the session. We have a question on the session. We have a question on <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, come to Canada for uh, uh, for an indefinite period. That's permanent residence or something like that. So it will give you an option how to apply and um, what uh, what are the document checklist you needed. So, pinay, our our 
ഇപ്പം വിസിറ്റിങ്ങിനായിട്ട് വരുന്ന കുറെ ആൾക്കാർ നമ്മളോട് ചോദിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് നല്ല കാര്യം ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടു ഓ യാ ഫോർ ഷുവർ താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് യു യു ലവ് ദ ലൈഫ് സ്ട്രീം ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൾ അബൌട്ട് ഹവ് ടു കം ടു കാനഡ സോ പീപ്പിൾ ഫ്രം ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് പീപ്പിൾ ഫ്രം വേൾഡ് വൈഡ് വെർ ദ ഡോൺ ലിവ് ഇൻ കാനഡ ബട്ട് ദേ ഹൂ ഡിസൈഡ് ടു കം ടു കാനഡ ഇവൻച്വലി ഫോർ എ ബെറ്റർ ലൈഫ് ഓർ ഫോർ മൈറ്റ് യൂസ് ദിസ് ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ Uh, or they will find it this information useful okay guys so anyways uh, um, so what i'm going to uh, what i'm trying to tell you here um, is that so nammal or visiting visa yana nammal apply cheyan vendi udheshikkunengile nammal eppozhum or karyam aalochikkam visiting visa is for visiting purpose only so if you are disguising that you are coming uh, you, you come to canada to work and you are getting a visiting visa that's absurd that's that's not the best uh, uh optimistically cynical yeah it, it is <laughs> um so anyways guys you have never stopped a baby before i i i know i don't know to what extent you understood this conversation it was in uh, my own language malayalam so people uh, Uh, from my country have asked me about uh, uh, explaining some immigration topic to these people so you know it it might uh, find annoying to some of the people who don't understand my original language but uh, guys some people from i have subscribed to people from china um, you know from all around the world so some of the language um, find funny to me too but uh, you know that's what uh, the world is there are Uh, tons of languages and tons of people different uh, different people so but uh, basically uh, we all are humans uh, under everybody's skin there is blood that's in uh, that's red so um, so i'm going to go back and explain to those people uh, the immigration policies and i obviously know that uh, who are come to canada should know a little bit of english so they will basically understand both language at the same way um so anyways guys if you are in this live stream and if you haven't subscribed to each other please do so so that you know you can uh, you can support and grow together and um whoever you haven't subscribed on my um, uh, subscriber list you can do that they will do it in return i'm pretty sure about that um so nammala visiting visa eduthu nammala canada like varumbom aa visiting in vendi aanu upayogikkanda adu ivada vanna jolly kandupidikkan vendi അല്ലെങ്കിൽ മറ്റുള്ള ഒരു അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ജോലിക്ക് നമുക്ക് ഓഫർ ലെറ്റർ കിട്ടിയിട്ടുണ്ട് പക്ഷേ എത്ര നമ്മൾ വർക്ക് വിസ അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അത്ര പെട്ടെന്ന് നമുക്ക് കിട്ടില്ല വിസിറ്റിംഗ് വിസ ക്യാൻ ബി ഇഷ്യൂഡ് ലെസ് ദാൻ വൺ ടു ടു മന്ത്സ് സോ യു ആർ ട്രൈയിങ് ദ ഈസി വേ ടു കം ടു കാനഡ സോ ദാറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വർക്കിംഗ് ആൻഡ് അപ്ലൈ ഫോർ കൺവേർട്ടിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് വിസിറ്റിംഗ് വിസ ടു വർക്ക് വിസ വിച്ച് ഈസ് വെരി 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 ഹാർഡ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ ഫൗണ്ട് എ ഫ്രോഡ് in front of canada um, immigration or canada government uh, you are absolutely will be banned for at least one year uh, you can come to canada you are you will be banned from entry to canada for at least one year and if the forgery or um, um, the fraudulism is more than that then obviously you will have a lifetime um ban for coming to canada it's same with um, uh, people who come to uh, canada from united states to they might have a girlfriend or a family in canada but uh, their life situation in uh, us is different so they try to come to canada uh, using a visiting visa or they just can just come uh, come here uh, with their um, uh, their own passport but if they decide to stay here for uh, an indefinite period of time other than their um, uh, visitor record it's called visitor record when you come to canada using a visiting visa you will be issued a visitor record you know what is a visitor record a visitor record will have information of all about you and the expiry of the time you can maximum stay in canada before that time if you don't come back to the port of entry or port of exit where you have come you will be uh, you will be issued a uh, a summons or a uh, um what is it called um you, you will be caught by the police and you will be de- uh, departed from uh, uh, canada uh, and you will be banned from canada so guys 
you know, it's the best way to come to Canada is you know the immigration policies. You don't need an um, agency. You don't need anybody who, uh, who to uh, go and get information because all the information you need to come to Canada will be readily available in the Canadian um, government website. So if you want to come to Canada, go through that website, find the FAQ questions, get the answers, and you might have friends and families in Canada, ask them questions, they will have the real life uh, experience to tell you what to expect. Uh, it's not an easy, easy job to come to Canada. I, 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 I swear it's not pretty easy like everybody thinks. It, it will be very easy for you to go to a European country, I guess. It will be very easy for you to go to um, an Arab country or um, uh, some other countries where they don't need a visa. But Canada is very strict with uh, immigration. We don't want people with uh, lots of criminal background uh, coming to Canada, not me. Uh, the Canadian government don't want uh, that happening to anybody. So basically, um, uh, we are trying, um, uh, the government is trying uh, to minimize uh, uh, people from uh, uh, people from a uh, different country with a criminal or a, a bad background come to Canada and uh, uh, creating problem to the Canadian population. So guys, so I'm 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 ex um, extremely sorry if I use some words that is not um, the best way for everybody to um, understand. I'm sorry about that. But uh, this is what the Canadian uh, government stated in the uh, last uh, um, bulletin about immigration too. So uh, now the conservatives are here and they, uh, they are welcoming immigrants. And the immigrants are very important to Canada. Canada has the most uh, multiculturalism and Canada has the most uh, um, uh, population, uh, diverse, and they are from, they are all immigrants, we are all immigrants. Canada has some native people here, they are originally uh, from here, but uh, other than that, the 80% of the total population from a different country, they have come to Canada and it's their home now, and they are working for the betterment of their family and for the Canadian, um, um, for, for developing the Canada as, uh, as a, a good country. And we have no racism here. We have no such problems here. The people are very good, very loving. We have all the amenities here. We have good transportation. You, your child will have the best education. And if you are, uh, if you have uh, a, a part-time, if you have a short-term disability, or if you have a, um, a medical or a surgical problems, uh, you will be assured to have some uh, uh, assured income um, for uh, if you are uh, handicapped or whatever if you end up handicapped but I, I, I hope nobody will get handicapped after coming here because our health and safety laws are very important and um, if you if you are wanting to drive uh, in Canada um, um, we have to follow the other rules you can't just drive according to your wish um, you will be stopped by a cop and will be issued um, uh, tickets and uh, jail time if you are not traveling, if you are not driving according to uh, the Canadian uh, motor vehicle law. So basically I have deviated from the, my original topic. We are discussing about uh, Canada immigration, how to come to Canada and um, a lot of my friends from India uh, and a lot of my friends from some other country, they asked me about, uh, hey, how, how is it in Canada? Uh, do you like it there? Is there any ways that we can come to Canada too? So I decided, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going off traffic, uh, off road, and discussing about some other uh, topics uh, with the uh, the immigration stuff we are talking here or discussing here. <coughs> if you have a question about um, uh, immigration, shoot it, and uh, I will answer that question right away. Um, United States, okay, optimistic, cynical, so true story. I have never stabbed a baby before. Yeah, well, in uh, we, we, we all have to be, um, we, we all have to be respecting uh, uh, other culture, 
and uh, their their belief too. If you're coming to Canada, try to uh, try to uh, try not to show you your own uh, you know um, attitudes to uh, some of the Canadian cultures they originally have. You know, try to respect it. You don't have to blame on anything that you don't like. If you don't like, you don't do it. That's the best way you can actually tackle that situation. So. <clears throat> about the visiting visa, if you're coming on a visiting visa, you will be issued a, um, guys, if you are in the live stream, please subscribe each other and like their channel. Uh, you will be issued a visitor record and it will it will give you the expiry date of your maximum stay at Canada. And by the end of that day, you have to leave Canada and try not to uh, uh, look for jobs and try not to do anything other than visiting uh, your original purpose of uh, visiting. So if you are visiting Canada for uh, uh, for spending some time with friends and family, you do so. If you're coming to Canada to do some uh, fishing in the best water bodies and trophy pikes, walleyes and trout uh, in Canada, and if you're coming to Canada to visit the best place, the heaven-like place in British Columbia, Jasper or um, um, Vancouver or um, uh, uh, Banff uh, or any other national parks in Canada, you please do so. Please don't make use of that uh, that uh, privilege that is given to you giving a visiting visa for any other purpose that you are not uh, intended to use, okay? So that's all about the visiting visa. Uh, you can use the My Account setting to apply for a visiting visa. You need to have a letter of invitation from uh, whoever in Canada actually inviting you to come to visit Canada and if it is something for uh, um, uh, so entertaining purpose then uh, you might not need that uh, letter of invitation where you can apply straight forward and uh, uh, the second thing about the federal uh, federal uh, immigration federal Im immigration is the best way to come to Canada if you have good education if you have um, um, uh, good skills. Our skill market, our job market is looking forward for uh, uh, manpower. Uh, our population is very, uh, very less uh, compared to different countries. Countries, so uh, we need manpower. We need work power for empowering our country, for developing our country to the best way. So, hi, OMKV Fishing and Cooking. Hi, Unichata, how are you doing? Uh, I'm just talking about some immigration things today. I will be going live tomorrow. Uh, to uh, explain about some fishing related ideas uh, about Amazon, uh, AliExpress, eBay and some other areas where you uh, wish to buy fishing um, stuff. But today's uh, topic is immigration. I am I'm going to stick with that topic. Uh, so thanks uh, everybody for uh, being here and supporting me. Um, if you if you have a question, you can you can actually do what when I, if I finish my um, if you got all the information from this live stream, perfect. Thank you very much. I could help you somehow. If you did not get all the information you were looking for and you missed from this live stream, you may please proceed and um, shoot your question under this uh, uh, video uh, on my YouTube. So I will definitely uh, give you the answer if i have um, your phone number there i will call you and discuss that information i really want to help people come to canada um years ago it was very tough to come to canada it is still tough to come to canada but the problem is that uh, you know there are people who wants to help uh, help others so you know when you come to canada on a false document if you are misinterpreting your uh, uh, your documentation guys it's not good. You will be caught one day. I am. I am pretty sure that you will be caught one day. You might disguise the Canadian government one time, but eventually, if you want to live here for such a long time, if you want to be a permanent resident and a citizen at one time, at one point of time, please do not uh, misinterpret on any of your documentation. Please don't give false information of uh, your work experience. Please don't give false information about uh, your financial background. Please don't do anything that is not true related to your background, which can be uh, used as a uh, weapon for you uh, to uh, 
you know it, it will come back to you like a boomerang and maybe you will be uh, you will be deported from canada uh, for and a lifetime ban so guys so i'm talking about uh, uh, the federal immigration now if you are in canada it doesn't mean that you have a permanent residence permanent residence is granted to people who uh, meet the qualification to be a permanent resident in canada so if you're working here on a work visa if you are here on a temporary work visa if you are a temporary foreign worker if you are a seasonal worker if you have come to canada on a spousal visa or dependent visa how you can get the permanent residency that's the next topic i am going to uh, talk about so basically it's the same thing if you are working in canada over 3 years in a um, noc category you have to know the skill level of your occupation so the national occupation classification or noc uh, will be available on cic.gc.ca the national occupational classification will give you the skill level of your uh, your job so if you are a nurse you will be on N noc a i guess uh, if you are a social worker noc 4212 that means uh, 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 noc a b and c categories are there the c category is a semi skilled category if you are a, um, a support worker you can be in the noc b category if you are a disability worker if you are a social worker then you are in managerial position or noc b category which is very good and if you are um, a registered nurse you are in NS, NS, noc a category where you can get your permanent residence uh, pretty fast so you can apply through the canadian canadian experienced class and if you are in particular province if you are from um, alberta there is alberta nominee program uh, it has been reopened yet but they started some uh, uh, some other ways of uh, coming to canada or being a permanent resident of canada if you are in uh, uh, alberta already so there is a nova scotia just started and reopened their uh, um, uh, immigration so they have reopened some some streams for their uh, sp sendry program uh, so as uh, um, uh, prince edward island has re reopened their uh, new schemes through the uh, sp sendry category so if you are a skilled worker if you are doing a skilled job you are uh, you are um, uh, possibility of uh, getting through the federal skilled worker category is very high so if you have uh, lots of years of experience working as a skilled worker then obviously you will choose to apply through the federal skilled category now it's everything as per century so go to cic.gc.ca and find the information uh how to apply and what all the information you need to do so all this information you can get from uh, where with the immigration site cic.gc.ca some of the information you can get from people who are already here in canada uh, on a permanent basis or people who are already here on a student visa and they got a job after they got a post graduation work permit after and they are um, uh, they have applied for uh, permanent residence Th those people can give you some uh, examples but uh, the important point i swear this is some of the important uh, point that i want to give you guys the first one is that your application when you do a paper application what all are the things you need to do you have a document checklist uh from the website where you are applying so each scheme has a document checklist for that scheme and each country will have a document checklist for that country so if you are applying for the same thing from two different countries the document checklist is not the same and the photo specification for uh, <coughs> uh, each category where you are applying is different please make sure what are the immigration um photo uh, specification and follow accurately uh, the specification uh, uh, in the studio where you going okay it has to be according to the specification or it will be rejected so that's the second thing the document checklist is the first thing the photo specification is the second thing and if your passport is going to expire in one year guys please renew your passport it has to be at least for your expiry on it before you apply to uh, apply for any immigration purpose because it will be expired meanwhile your application is in process 
then it will automatically lag your file it will automatically um, uh, extend the processing time of your file so if you have your passport uh, expiring soon guys please uh, make sure it gets, it gets renewed okay <clears throat> the third point should be your application should be complete your application should be complete each and every uh, uh, documents you are asked hey john ames hi how are you man i'm just talking about some uh, canada immigration things i don't know to what extent it will be uh, helping you but uh, thanks for coming and saying hi to me um, so your documents should be comprehensive you should not be missing a document you should not uh, forget to uh, include a document that's relevant to your application because eventually uh, the immigration officer who is taking care of your file will be asking for that particular document then the turnaround time for that the document to be updated and attached to your document will take one to two months why do you have to just delay your application because something you already know that you needed to submit and you did not so guys if you are sub applying for something make sure your application is complete it has to be complete application and make sure your application might contain uh, and your application uh, is comprehensive your application should have all the relevant information all the updated information if you have done a medical examination a uh, long time ago almost seven months before the validity is one year pretty, uh, basically but you are applying after seven months your your medication uh, your uh, uh, your medic medic what is it called uh, uh, your medical check won't be uh, 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 it, it will be a it, it will be a by the time the immigration officer um, look at your file okay so uh, your your document should be updated okay if you have a recent work experience attach that file okay then only your processing will be done very easily and if you're uh, if you're bragging about your processing is taking too much time don't blame anybody don't blame the immigration officer don't blame canada it's because you haven't given all the information needed and you haven't given the most updated information and you haven't given all the information and more so that they don't have to call you they don't have to email you to get more information or more clarification about the documents you have already given and if your documents in a different language if it is in arabic uh, if you have worked in uh, saudi arabia and that documentation is in arabic make sure you translate that into english i don't know uh, the canada government would not uh, take care of uh, uh, a, an uh, a document in a different language other than english and french if it is in english or in french you have to you have to translate that back into the same language that i said okay so that's the again that's the fourth thing then if you are categorizing your document so for example i'm gonna say work experiences so work experience is the uh, is the sixth uh, point in your suppose that is the sixth point in your document checklist so make sure you make a small uh, plastic file it will have your recent work experience in a chronological order or your last work experience to the um, the recent work experience or i mean uh, your um, old work experience to the new work experience or the other way it should be um, it should be in the file with work experience and experience letter then you can uh, put the letter of recommendation from people you can put other uh, mark list or other po uh, possible uh, documentation you need it uh, and you think it's going to fit in that uh, work experience category okay put that everything into that um, um, paper file then that is the document uh, uh, that should be the document all in one file so the immigration officer don't have to go back and forth <clears throat> so I i'm gonna say uh, something different okay i'm gonna say um your educational qualification and uh, you are putting uh, all your education from uh, your SSS LC or high school diploma uh, your plus two or three degree uh, your um, uh, higher education like uh, vocational high secondary or um, your nating 
or your uh, uh, engineering um, uh, certificates and their mark list, everything in one uh, one uh, file. So the immigration officer don't have to go back and forth. They get all the information readily available when they open your file. And if you have, uh, if you are applying for, uh, I'm talking about the federal immigration right now. Hereafter, I'm gonna go and talk about the um, uh, spousal visa. Then there will be more information you needed for uh, all these uh, uh, document checklist guys. So anyways, uh, right now we are talking about uh, the complete uh, documentation. Make sure you have all the information, the document checklist is uh, fully followed. And if you have any of the education that you wanted to um, uh, equate with uh, the Canadian standard, there is ICAMS, International Credential Assessment uh, System, IC, ICAMS, uh, if I'm saying it right, International Credential Assessment System. So the, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, that's where you have to apply for uh, equating your uh, educational uh, experience to Canadian standard. And those um, uh, issued documents should be attached with uh, uh, your uh, educational uh, documentation. So that's where you need to find out like what all the documents you needed. So ba basically, if you are a French uh, native speaker, you don't need uh, you don't need anything to prove your uh, education, uh, your uh, language proficiency because you are a native French speaker. If you are from the uh, United States of America, you speak English. You should speak English. So you don't need any documentation to prove your uh, uh, your uh, your English proficiency. But if you are from India, our first language is not English, so you definitely need uh, IELTS or CELBAN or uh, some other um, uh, English test that is uh, uh, given by uh, the, that is accepted by the uh, Canada Immigration. You have to take that IELTS or whatever. So if you are uh, applying for a uh, federal skilled worker category, you have to take a general test. It's not uh, an academic test, guys. If you're applying for a student work permit, then you have to apply for, uh, you have to take a um, academic version of uh, IELTS test. That's not a that's not a general test, guys. So you need to know uh, which type of uh, uh, English test you need to take to come to Canada according to the stream you are applying through. Okay. So if you have any doubt regarding any of this information, make sure you come and uh, or you ask that question right below this uh, um, uh, uh, video so that I can come back and answer your questions, okay? So uh, the next topic, so your skilled worker uh, application is sent out, what to expect next? You will be getting a file number. So if you are on a postgraduate work permit and you got the file number for your permanent residence, that's where you can apply for, uh, uh, so you are on a postgraduate work permit, you can apply for an open work permit. So what is an open work permit and a closed work permit? So all these questions, I won't be able to discuss all these questions today, but it's a open work permit will grant you permission to work for any employer in Canada, okay? A closed work permit is something that will, that will make you work for only one employer who have given that uh, closed, work, uh, <clears throat> closed work visa, okay? So closed work visa, you will be working for one employer. If you have a open work permit, you can work for as many as employers you want to work for okay and um, uh, usually um, uh, the um, uh, you will you will be able to do 35 to 40 hours uh, a week usually and uh, if you have a full-time job and a part-time job make sure you take out some extra um, uh, tax from one of the jobs you're doing so that at the end of the year you don't have to uh, you don't have to spend a chunk of money uh, just for the uh, uh, extra uh, tax you need to up, uh, give to the government. So make sure you take out some little extra money each time from your pay stub if you're working more than one job at the same time, okay? So right now that's about somebody who is already in Canada. So who wants to come to Canada? So federal skilled worker, as per Sendri, I have already explained about the PNP or uh, provincial nominee program. You have to apply through one of these scheme. Okay, so make sure which category you can apply to. Okay, now you are coming to Canada using a visiting visa. 
make sure you come here to visit you come here to do the purpose of uh, your visit okay nor anything else okay the next thing uh, about uh, um, permanent residency so if uh, the, there are changes in laws with the permanent residency <clears throat> uh, there are changes in uh, laws with uh, the Canadian citizenship so if you are in Canada your physical presence in Canada uh, as a foreign worker as a student everything will be taken into account for uh, for the uh, 1600 uh, days or um, uh, five years uh, three years of the five years stay in Canada that will be taken into account hey fishing bolt how are you man John Ams how are you thank you for coming uh, for visiting visa what are the procedure so visiting visa I have just uh, um, just talked about visiting visa already um, but I am gonna uh, I'm gonna explain furthermore so for you to come to Canada on a visiting visa you have to give uh, the purpose of your visit uh, why you have to come to Canada you have come to Canada to meet a family to meet your girlfriend to come and fish to come and look for uh, um, or, or sightseeing or whatever what uh, what is the purpose of your uh, uh, your visit to come to Canada then you have uh, you are from states I definitely know that I guess so um, so what you got, what you gotta do uh, you have to give the purpose of uh, uh, your visit then there should be somebody if there is somebody already in Canada who invading you to come to Canada they can give a letter saying that uh, uh, I am invading this uh, I am invading fishing bolt to come to Canada and I will take care of his expenses when he is in Canada and he will not be looking for any jobs or anything uh, he, his uh, purpose of visit to just uh, um, have a visit with me or whatever so if there is an invitation letter from uh, uh, who are already in Canada who you wish to visit will aid your processing faster then you have to have your police clearance then if you can do an upfront medical examination to come to Canada that would be great your passport should be having at least five to ten years of expiry date which is good then you will get uh, at least um, a 10 year of visiting uh, visiting visa so i'm i'm not telling that you have to you have to give a a, a long expiry date for the passport on which you are applying or vis uh, applying for a visiting visa so you will get a longer period of a visiting visa so you will get multiple entry visiting visa for 10 years so if you have only five years expiry on it you will get a uh, multiple entry visa for uh, uh, five years only so you have to apply for it again so what is a multiple entry and a single entry visiting visa a multiple entry visiting visa on any visiting visa other than the parent visa and the grandparent super visa other than these two visa um, any visiting visa you have to leave Canada at the end of six months you can do a fl flag polling you can just exit Canada through one of the uh, border of uh, United States and you can come straight back in to enter Canada that means you you re entered the Canada if you have a single entry visiting visa you won't be able to do a flag polling you have to go back to your home country to reapply or you have to apply for an extension of your uh, visiting visa while uh, you are here in Canada on a visiting visa so you have two possibilities so multiple entry visas are really good um, so you apply for United States if you're applying for um, a visiting visa usually they give you uh, a, a visa for the uh, expiry of the passport you are giving okay so uh, that visa will be valid for 10 years or whatever years you have uh, you have been approved and you you might be able to do uh, multiple entry to Canada so you don't have to uh, you can live there for six months and come back to one of the borders and go back and do a flag polling and you will be good to stay another six months for parent and grandparent super visa uh, usually they allow the grandparents to stay at least uh, two years at a time uh, in Canada if my uh, information if my knowledge is correct make sure you you might have to check it one more time I'm saying everything from my brain I used to have a uh, website it's called canadavisa.com where I have helped people from different countries on federal skilled worker, uh, spousal visa, 
student visa, visiting visa. I have given all the information to people who have asked me for help. Okay, I am an immigrant from uh, a different country to this uh, this beautiful country, Canada. I love it here. And if anybody wants to come to Canada and make sure they love the same, um, um, if they want to uh, want to have a life like. Uh, uh, all of us in Canada, then you are all welcome. You know, you know, just make sure you are applying through the right channel. Uh, you know, there are lots of people uh, coming to Canada, like asylum seekers. They are refugees of um, different kinds coming to Canada. I'm not against any of that, but uh, there is the right way to come to Canada. I'm not against the refugees. I'm not against the asylum seekers. There will be having a reason for them to come to Canada as a reason uh, they come to Canada as asylum seeker. But uh, the government is uh, uh, helping them to build their lives. Uh, if you're refugees or if you're if you're being sponsored to Canada, uh, the the government is taking care of uh, uh, you people uh, to the best way they could. And uh, you know the Canadian taxpayers, tax play, payers are paying the money to uh, take care of uh, whoever come to Canada as a refugee or um, asylum seekers, etc. So it will increase the burden of uh, uh, the taxpayers, but uh, you know I can do nothing about it. You know, um, but if you come to Canada as a foreign worker, if you come to Canada as a seasonal worker, if you come to Canada as a immigrant or on a visiting visa, you you know you have the right to be here. Then then you uh, you know uh, the the laws and enforcement will take care of your stay in Canada. It's the best country to live. It's the peaceful country to live. There is nothing like um, um, gun shooting or um, racism. Um, I wouldn't say like anything. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that in Canada. It's a beautiful country. That's why I live it. I live here and I enjoy it here. So guys, so now we are going to go uh, further on the um, uh, visiting visa. Then you apply uh, online uh, by um, cac.gc.ca and make a my CAC account and apply straightforward. All the information, all the documents you needed will be uh, given at the end of you finish uh, your uh, entry to come to Canada checklist. Then you will get the um, um, uh, information, what are the information you need to apply for uh, uh, for a visiting visa. Okay, guys, you need to specify uh, your financial status back home. You will have to specify um, uh, how much money you're taking to Canada stuff like that so you might get a uh, multiple entry or single entry visiting visa in that case okay so um, by the end of your visiting visa if you want to extend that there are options by the end of your visiting if you want to apply for a work visa if you have found an employer and they have hired you somehow I don't know how that works if they have given you an Lima it was it used to be called uh, uh, LMO but now it's called Lima it's called a labor market opinion. Can type the can type the domain name that we need. Check the details of the eligibility. For sure, I'm gonna do it right away. C I C dot G C G C dot C A C I C dot Government of Canada dot C A. You get all the information there. Okay. So if you need any information, you don't have to go anywhere, guys. You just go cic.gc.ca and if you need further uh, further help with some uh, uh, some of the thanks man so if you need further help with any of the things that you have uh, struggle understanding you can shoot me a, uh, a comment right below this uh, video so that I will get an extra comment at the same time I can help you um, help you guide through to uh, get uh, get your 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 doubt being clarified. Okay, so what what I'm trying to say now we're gonna go and talk about spousal visa. So you are already in Canada. Uh, you might have um, um, applied for your spouse to come to Canada. Your spouse may be here already on a dependent visa, but you have to apply for a spousal visa together. Or if uh, if your spouse in uh, a different country and you are in Canada and you want to sponsor your wife or you want to apply for uh, uh, her permanent residence then you have to apply for a spousal visa the spousal visa used to take years used to take two three four years to finalize 
now they have uh, uh, taken care of the, all the backlogs now the uh, the spousal visa is actually uh, issued less than one year that's a good thing man so it's a it's a very important thing for family unification the government of canada is striving their best for the family unification if your spouse in canada and you are not there how come you can live happily how come the the canada um, uh, workforce get uh, uh, your maximum skills being used how how can the canada will get benefited uh, out of your presence in canada because you are better half in a different country so that's where you have to apply for spousal visa a spousal visa uh, you can you have to apply a paper copy and uh, a, there is two part of a spousal visa there is an application for yourself who is in canada and there is an application for your wife who is in a different country so you have to apply your part uh, then uh, cic will or um, uh, the immigration will let you know that your application is approved for you to uh, for you to uh, sponsor your wife to come to Canada. Once your part is done, then her application will be uh, taken into consideration. So her application will be um, uh, will be uh, sent to the country of origin where she is, or it can be done in Ottawa uh, or some of the other visa centers worldwide for Canada. So if you are if you're, if your spouse in, uh, in India uh, or in Kerala, then your spousal visa application will be um, will be taken care of in um, um, uh, Kolkata or um, um, Bangalore or somewhere. Okay. So this uh, your, your spousal. So you will get a, a file number for your wife. Then when whenever you want to check the status of your application you have to go online so it's called uh, uh, check the processing time of your application and check the uh, uh, check the status of your application so what stage the first stage will be uh, there is like four lines of uh, your application once your application is uh, 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 once you send out the application and you got a file number then the application will say we have received your application on that particular day and the next uh, sentence will be we started processing your application on that day that's the second line the third line will be medical has been received fourth line will be uh, decision making is done okay so when you get the uh, last one decision making is done then you will be getting a ppr or pa passport request so when you get the passport request you have to send out your passport so if you're spouse in uh, india you have to send out your passport to bangalore uh, visa office where they will give you a visa and uh, uh, once you uh, once you get the permanent residence card sent out to your Canadian address in Canada then you're good to go okay so that's the spousal visa when you have when you apply for a spousal visa you have to include all the documentation where was your marriage conducted who was there in your marriage you know did you book a uh, a, a hall for your marriage ceremony uh, you know uh, do you have uh, any evidence of your marriage um, uh, in the church or the temple or wherever you got married? You have a, a legal paper saying you've been married. So how long you've been married? All this information, photos of uh, your marriage, your, uh, um, your WhatsApp or uh, email talk between you and your spouse when you were apart. All this information should be included in your spousal visa application and it should be complete all the information so yeah, where was the marriage conducted you are, uh, who all were invited did you have a invitation card for whoever uh, who were took part in your marriage you know so where was it happened when was it happened um, you know all the information should be in your spousal visa application so you don't have to uh, wait for the turn around if they don't have enough information and they ask for us for the documentation guys so make sure you have all the information you needed for applying to spousal visa and uh, the last topic I will be discussing I did not talk I did not uh, talk about anything in details if you have a question you have the right you are appreciated you are welcome to give me a shout on my uh, YouTube channel give me a question and I will answer whatever possible way I can answer that question or I will redirect to you a website 
where uh, these information are um, uh, you can find that information so the final topic i will be going for student visa so guys if you are a, if you are a, a different uh, if you are from a different country you have to come to canada and if you want to join uh, um, a, a college or university and you want to take a good course then there are options here once you have completed uh, your education in canada that will be considered as a canadian education that can be used as a, a, an important uh, point towards your entry. and once you completed your education you will be getting a post graduation work permit uh, uh, up to the year how many years you see if your uh, course was for two years you might be getting a two-year post-graduation work permit. If your course was for two semester or one year, you will get a post-graduation work permit for one year. A post-graduation work permit will allow you to work for anybody. It is just like an open work permit, but whenever you got admitted to your, uh, your school and you've been approved a letter of uh, invitation, you've been approved a letter of acceptance or LOA, then you uh, once you are here in Canada, uh, you will be getting an off-campus work permit. So off-campus work permit is different where you can work in the uh, work under 30 hours uh, anywhere. Okay, so that's off-campus work permit, then post-graduation work permit. And if your post-graduation work permit is going to be a paid and you didn't get a good job, you, your permanent residency is not approved, then you're going to go into restoration. Restoration is a period where you have no status in Canada. That means you don't have a student status, you don't have a visitor status, you, got a temp you don't have a temporary visa, uh, temporary resident visa or TRV, you don't have any of those stuff. That means you are illegal to stay in Canada, but uh, if you have an application in process, then you can always apply for a visiting visa, a temporary uh, resident visa, and you can apply for an um, open work permit if you have a file number while you are on restoration or while, you, while your post-graduation work permit is just about to uh, get a spade. So make sure you make sure you have some status in Canada. And um, um, so uh, there is lots of um, uh, courses being offered to, um, to uh, anybody who wants to come and take a course in Canada. Uh, there is a, it's a vast very, uh, variety of uh, disparity uh, in the um, uh, tuition fees for a Canadian resident who is a permanent resident and do a foreign student. A foreign student will be paying four times more tuition fees than a Canadian permanent resident, okay? So if you're a Canadian permanent resident, your tuition fees will be thousand bucks and your, uh, um, uh, if you're a foreign uh, student, you will be, you'll be paying four thousand bucks at the same time, okay? So, but um, it's the best way to come to Canada. You, if you come to Canada somehow, there is an option for you to stay here too, okay? Uh, you, you don't have to always go back to your home country after your education or after your stay. But if you're on a visiting visa, you obviously have to go back. There is no option, I would say, and I wouldn't recommend you to uh, stay any day further after that. But if you're on a student visa, you have option to apply for a permanent residency. You have option to uh, extend your uh, uh, temporary resident visa, stuff like that. And you make sure you have enough money to leave uh, here in Canada while uh, you are doing your uh, education. You, you know, um, if you want a car, you have to get a, um, uh, you have to get a uh, license, lot of money. If you want to buy a car, lots of money. If you got a car, you have to pay lots of insurance because you are from a different country. Uh, and even if you have a car and license and insurance, you need gas, lots of money. And if you need a home to stay, you need more money for the rent. And if you need to find out um, a different information, um, you have to talk to some other people who will give you assistance for a payment. So, you know, don't go to any immigration agent. My, so I'm going to conclude my, uh, uh, my live stream for today, but it will be, uh, it will be airing again soon. If I, if I am being asked for uh, more information from different people, I will be giving more information. Uh, then, and I will make sure my computer will be working that time, then um, uh, my live stream will be um, uh, about, uh, I will go in details of a particular topic you guys be uh, asking, okay? So I am concluding my topic, Canada is a very good country, 
and it's a very nice country to live you will get everything here what a calm and peaceful country and you get lots of money for working here you get everything you want but make sure you are playing through the correct channel you don't need an immigration advocate you don't need an immigration lawyer if you have a computer if you have a, a photocopier or a printer uh, and if you if you know how to read and write english and if you can take over some of the documents and uh, then go to cic.gc.ca find out your options and apply to uh, apply uh, directly to the government of canada and uh, you will be um, you will be accepted you will be approved for your canadian stay so better luck to whoever come to canada whoever wants to come to canada i really really appreciate who are being here and supporting me for this live stream and the uh, next time um, if you have any question comment below and next time uh, i will come with a random topic but obviously that's going to be about something about fishing this topic i just took just because lots of people ask me about the immigration problems lots of people are asking me for immigration advice but i don't i am not good at giving advice i am very good at giving suggestions but i am giving uh, i am giving my information my knowledge to whoever in them to come to canada it is not 100% accurate it is not uh, uh, everything you need but uh, this is where you can find the information cic.gc.ca and thank you guys and thank you for joining dr fishing i will come to you guys with a nice episode of uh, a video and a live stream next time until then it's dr fishing signing off bye bye